Now you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another TNI news video. Now I've only got a few things I wanted to share with you guys today and in fact two of the items that I have for you today are updates to stories I talked about previously here on YouTube and of course stories that we posted on the websites. But uh, the third one is, is a new announcement and it comes from Super 7 in regards to Thundercats. But before we get into that, let me, uh, let me go over these first two stories. And also before I even do that, let me just give you my usual reminder about the two contests that are going on, both Marvelous News and Toy News International, where we're giving away $100 store credits to Big Bad Toy Store. I have links to both those contest details in the video description below and do recommend that you check those out. Okay, so for the first bit of news I wanted to share with you, it's in regards to Mezco and their 112 Collective line, specifically the Iron Fist figure, which I think it was just my last news video I talked about uh, that figure in. And uh, Mezco today, just today, came out with an update. So apparently a lot of people weren't happy with it. They were getting complaints. Even in my video when I talked about it, I, I shared my own thoughts, how I didn't really like the way it looked with the skin tight suit. You know, those figures with the cloth outfits that don't have like armor padding or belts or things like that to kind of cover up a lot of, of the cloth outfit. I just, for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of. But I guess I wasn't alone in that um, and, and people were complaining. And so uh, Mezco has come up with, looks like kind of a quick fix. And honestly, I don't know how much it really improves the figure, but they're gonna be including a sash or a belt type item that you can put on the figure. You don't have to have it on the figure, it's your choice. But if you like that added kind of thing to kind of cover up some of the cloth green outfit, you know, they've included that. And they released today an updated image with the sash on. And like I said, I'm not sure how much it really improves it, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, were you thinking about holding off on this figure and now with the sash, you'll get it? You know, or are you still not really feeling it? You know, let me know in the comments section below. Okay, and the next story I wanted to talk to you guys about, again, this is really kind of an update, and I've talked about this in a few different videos, but you may recall right before San Diego Comic-Con, Hasbro made a big announcement that their next HasLab item for action figure stuff, I'm, I'm not even gonna talk about the Cookie Monster, but uh, for action figure type stuff, they are going to be doing Unicron from the original Transformers animated movie back in the 80s. This thing is a huge figure. They had it on display at San Diego, both in planet mode and, and robot mode, and very highly detailed. It's got working parts like the in planet mode, uh, the mouth crunching function uh, where he you know, eats the planets. So definitely a cool looking figure. Uh, you know, I was very impressed with it when I saw it in person at San Diego and and have been i haven't yet but but seriously considering about you know throwing down the money to to get one of these now here's the thing they announced this at the end of last month essentially and they really didn't give us a whole lot of time on this you know august 31st is the cutoff date at least right now for when you can back this thing and what they wanted is eight thousand backers so the figure costs five hundred and seventy-five dollars, or technically four uh, five seventy uh, five seventy-four ninety-nine, but we'll round up to five seventy-five. And uh, again, you have to have that money in hand and ready to back it by the end of this month, August thirty-first. And if they if they don't get that, according to what they tell us, this toy will not go into production and we'll never actually see it made. Now, I, you know, when they did the sale barge last year, I had my doubts that, you know, they wouldn't go forward. You know, I just, I find it hard to believe with these huge, gigantic projects that when they've gone so far as to make the production sample and all that, that they're just going to pull the plug. I mean, they've spent so much time designing this thing. And, and this one's a joint project between Takara and Hasbro. And, you know, they showed you as videos at San Diego about the whole design process and everything. So I just, for me personally, I find it hard to believe that they're just going to say, okay, we didn't get 8,000, we're going to pull the plug. Uh, but that's what they say. That's what they tell us. So um, I guess we have to take them for, at their word. Now, here's the thing. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot of people or a number of people who are going to wait to the last minute, and I'll probably be one of those people. You know, not everybody just has, you know, uh, $575 laying around to buy one toy with. Um, some people probably spend that in a month easily, but, you know, for others, again, you know, it's not like it, it's just a, a small chunk, chunk of change that you pull out of your wallet and, and use to buy a toy. So um, I'm sure there's going to be a number of people who are going to wait to the last minute. And again, I probably will be one of those people. 
But at the same time, as of right now, I'm, I'm looking at the website and there's only 19 days left for this thing to be backed. And they only have 2,428 backers out of the 8,000 that they need. Now, keeping in mind that this thing probably has already gotten as much publicity as it's going to get. I mean, it got quite a bit of publicity when it was first announced and during San Diego Comic Con. You know, all the Transformer fan sites obviously covered it. But then you got you had a lot of other uh, larger corporate media sites like the IGNs and stuff covering this thing as well. So I feel like in those first two weeks when it was first announced and then during San Diego Comic Con that this thing really... Uh, had as much publicity as it's going to get. I mean, I don't see Hasbro running actual TV ads or anything like that for this. And, you know, I don't see like this showing up in the news or something. So, uh, you know, this is really it. They've been doing some advertising on social media, Facebook and Instagram, which I think is a waste of their money. If you want my honest opinion, uh, they'd be better to spend that on uh, advertising on the fan sites, to be absolutely honest. Of course, I am a little biased since uh, I run one of those fan sites. But, but nevertheless, um, you know, that's where they're spending what money they are in advertising for this thing is like on Instagram and Facebook. So... Um, and I guess they just expect the fan sites will cover this um, when they release little videos and stuff, which, you know, for the more, I, I, being completely honest, they're right. Uh, you know, when they uh, put a video up on HasLab or what have you, generally we'll, we'll cover that type of thing. But is it going to be enough? That's the big question. You know, again, 19 days and they haven't even gotten 3,000 backers yet out of the 8,000 that they need. And I would really, even though, again, I, I'm sure there are going to be a number of people who are going to wait to the last minute. Is it really reasonable to expect that that many people are, are going to wait that long? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, again, I'd be very surprised. I'd be very surprised if this thing did not get pushed forward. I mean, worst case scenario, in my opinion, is I could see Hasbro maybe pushing that August 31st date if they really don't have the backers that they need to go forward with this. Uh, I could see them coming out and saying, okay, we're going to give you until the end of September or something along those lines. But um, again, I just, I, I, on the one hand, you know, it seems like they've got a long way to go and, and, uh, that they could really get that many backers in, in just 19 days is is something I would have doubts about. But at the same time, I really kind of feel like there's no way they, they're they not going to go forward with this. So uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you going to get one? Um, ha are you saving up the money? You know, do you think it's going to go through? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Um, and like I said, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Okay, and then the final bit of news I have for you guys today is on the Thundercats front. Super 7 today has announced that they are going to finally be taking over the Classics line from Mattel for Thundercats. You know, you may recall when they took over, first took over the He-Man line and Mattel had pulled the line on everything from Maddie Collector that Super 7 had indicated they were hoping to be able to do Thundercats as well. That didn't pan out, and my feeling is at that time there was supposed to be a new cartoon coming for Thundercats. It was uh, nothing like we'd seen before, very uh, kind of cheesy looking, and the fan reaction to that cartoon was not good. And in fact, I think that cartoon ended up getting canceled before it even debuted. And my guess is why, uh, if the, I won't swear to that, but the cartoon was like announced two years ago and I've never heard anything more on it. So um, uh, maybe I'll Google it and see if it, there was any official announcement of it being canceled. Just real quick, I did do a Google search for the Thundercats Roar cartoon and there's been nothing really official one way or the other about the status of it. There was uh, at San Diego Comic-Con, Warner Brothers, who's doing the cartoon. They had one of the bags that they give out featured artwork for the cartoon. So that would be an indication that maybe it's not been canceled. But at the same time, there was nothing at Comic-Con. There was no panels. There was no trailers. There was no nothing. There's been no uh, release date. It was actually first announced last year, I think back in May. And it was supposed to be out sometime this year. But again, there's been no release dates or anything along those lines for it. So I really don't know if it's been canceled or not. But certainly doesn't seem like something they're moving uh, forward with anytime soon. And so my guess is that's why Mattel is now uh, more keen to letting uh, Super 7 take over the license. Also may just be kind of a consolation prize. You know, it seems like they're pulled back on the Masters of the Universe. Uh, now that a movie's coming and everything, Mattel seems to be taking a more hands-on approach to Masters. They're doing the new line they announced at San Diego that's supposed to be coming to retail. We don't know exactly what the status of classics is, whether Super 7 will be able to continue to do any classics. 
again, maybe that news will come this weekend at PowerCon, but at this point, I feel like Mattel is probably going to be um, taking over most of the Masters of the Universe stuff. Probably get uh, continue to get some reaction stuff from, from Super 7, and like I said, maybe even a few more uh, classics, but, but I really feel like Mattel's going to want to push their new line that they're taking to retail uh, to coincide with the coming movie and everything as opposed to letting another company do the license but you know again maybe as a consolation prize they're now letting super 7 do the thundercat stuff and which seems to be the case because now they've announced that they are taking over classic so the first band of figures that they announced today is essentially the same figures that mattel already did um, and I have the Mattel figures right here. So we're getting a new Lion-O figure and all these figures, they're under a new subline called Ultimates. And they did the same thing with Masters of the Universe. So, you know, maybe they do Ultimates. You know, there's not nearly as many Masters of the Universe figures that Mattel did as, uh, or there's not nearly as many Thundercat figures that Mattel did like they, there was with Masters. But maybe with these initial figures, they're called Ultimates and then they call the, the newer figures that they do uh, something different. I don't know. But these ultimate figures are the same ones that they've already released, that Mattel had already released. They just have a few additional accessories. So you've got, again, you've got the Lion-O figure with additional accessories. We're getting Panthro, again, with additional accessories. And then we're getting Jackal Man, again, with additional accessories. And the final figure is the Mummified Mumra. Now you'll notice the one good thing about the Mummified Mumra. I mean, the accessories all look nice. But with the Mumra, you get two different versions of his cape. You get this hard plastic one, which really kind of limits the figure's movement because it covers so much of his shoulders and arms. And then they're also giving us a soft goods version of the cape. So that's definitely cool. But here's the real kicker is these figures, these uh, new Super 7 Ultimate figures are going to cost $45 each. Now they are allowing you to buy the figures individually. You don't have to buy all four, but they do cost $45. And if I remember correctly, and I don't remember 100%, but if I remember correctly, the original Mattel figures were only at like $25 uh, when you purchase them off uh, Maddie Collector. So, um, you know, quite the price hike in, you know, for just a few additional accessories. So for me personally, I have no plans on getting these ultimate figures. I already have the original Mattel ones and the additional accessories are not worth paying that much money. And so I'm gonna be passing on this first wave. And I have a feeling a number of you out there are gonna be feeling the same way. Not everybody. And of course, there'll be those who missed out on the Mattel figures or maybe missed out on some of the Mattel figures that will wanna pick these up. But again, I have to feel like there's a number of people that are not really going to be that interested in, it, in buying the same figures over again, especially when they cost $45 each. So that's the big question. What, how, where do they go from here? Say this line does not sell that well, which hopefully they've planned for. But does that mean that they're going to cancel the line on us again um, you know, before we get the remaining core characters? You know, will they do a second line almost immediately after this ultimate line with new figures? And will those new figures include both Jachar and Tigra? Probably not. If we're lucky, we might get one of the two. But I really find it hard to believe they're going to give us the two, probably the two figures in, in greatest demand right off the bat. You know, again, companies tend to like to uh, spread these things out. So we'll have to see uh, where they're going to be going forward with this. But definitely I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you going to get these figures? Are you even? I, I wouldn't be surprised if some people are thinking, well, I have the Mattel figures, but I really want to see this line continue. So I'm going to go on and buy these figures again just to support the line. I wouldn't recommend that line of thought. You know, if you already have the figures and you don't feel like it's worth buying them again, I really would save your money. But uh, again, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some people that just are so adamant on trying to support the line that they're going to go and buy the figures anyway. But still, those are going to be small in number, I think. And so hopefully again super seven is anticipating that these figures these uh, ultimate figures are not going to sell in large numbers and yet we'll still go forward with the line and hopefully very soon after this uh, first wave is released now I don't have an exact release date on this uh, wave of ultimate figures it looks like sometime by the end of the year but again they have not given a specific date on when these figures will be released but they are up for pre-order and you can pre-order them at both places like super seven themselves or Big Bad Toy Store, and they're even the same price at Big Bad Toy Store. They're $45 at Big Bad Toy Store. Sometimes these figures are a little more expensive uh, when you buy them outside of the actual company website. But for these, uh, even though it's already a hefty price, but they're not more expensive if you decided you want to buy them at Big Bad Toy Store. 
Now, the other thing is, um, you know, as some of you, I've never owned a Super 7 action figure before. I've never bought any of their He-Man figures. And so I'm not really familiar with uh, the quality of their product. But I was reading on the TNI message boards, which, you know, again, if you put over there talking Thundercats and He-Man, you know, you get entered into the contest. But anyway, uh, I was reading some of your guys' uh, comments over there. And some of you apparently have had quality control issues with the Super 7 figures that you've purchased. So I, I, I'm, again, not familiar personally about that, but that could be an issue as well. Wouldn't be too surprising. I mean, Super 7 is a very small toy company. I mean, they started out literally as just a magazine. Used to be a magazine called Super 7, and they branched out into becoming a, essentially a toy manufacturer. But they're still a very small company, and, you know, they're taking on these uh, rather large licenses like He-Man and Thundercats. You know, with the He-Man, as I understood it, they actually were using the same factory that Mattel used. But, of course, they don't have the size and the clout that Mattel did, so the factory was probably not giving them the priority that they maybe gave Mattel, which meant maybe some quality control issues slipped in when they really shouldn't have. It sucks, but... You know, it happens with a lot of these smaller toy companies. You know, we've seen NECA have their quality control issues in the past. We've seen DC collectibles have those kinds of issues in the past. So unfortunately, it's just uh, the reality of, of the toy industry and having to deal with these, you know, these toy companies, these small toy companies that have to deal with these overseas factories that really want to deal with the large toy companies. So, um Hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. But again, I saw some of you uh, making comments uh, in regards to the quality control. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on, on this and everything else that I talked about today. Share them in the comments section below. You should also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you're so inclined and hit the bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. And of course, you can also follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I have links to all those in the video description as well. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.